bottom part of the fairground, oh, like okay. where the youth building and uh, the cattle barn and all right. that stuff. We're using that quadrant is oh, and okay. all the parking we're going to use for UTVs. And stuff. Welcome to what's new. We have some lovely guests this evening, and uh, since this. <laughs> My first time in a while. I'm going to let uh, Iris take over because <laughs> I can't remember things. <laughs> oh, Mary Ann. And we have to wish Mary Ann a happy birthday yesterday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> we would sing, but <laughs> <laughs> not a good idea. She wants to live longer. <laughs> so yeah. tonight we have Chip and Jean and Christine, and they're going to tell you about the events that are going to take place on June the 10th. And ours is a little earlier than that. Oh, that is Fourth Friday. Yes, we're yeah. talking about Fourth Friday. That'll be Friday. this weekend. And yeah. that is this weekend, right. and the weather is supposed to be very nice, and there's a lot of interesting stuff that's going to be going on during Fourth Friday. Uh, scattered pretty much throughout town. Yeah. yeah, I think so. There's a lot going on. The Art Guild, for example, the Art Center will be open, and there's a very good show by guild artists um, that's hanging at this point and, and the the work you know I think people don't know how many really talented artists we have in our local art guild uh, the membership is up to about 50 now and it's more than that it's more, more than, than 55 a couple more joined it's uh, um, uh, a, a very vital group and the art that's being produced is really high quality and varied you know a lot of people think oh the art guild they just have paintings but that's not true we have people who are doing um, uh, pottery we have people who are doing a variety of kinds of fabric crafts we have people who are making delightful little decorative things that people might want in their houses mm -hmm. so a stop at the art guild is definitely a very good idea that's uh, in the old museum library building right behind the courthouse for anybody who's not familiar with the layout of things. And then the next logical stop, if you start at the Art Guild, is probably Bricks Winery. And they're doing a really fun, exciting yeah, thing. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. Want to talk about that a little bit? Well, I know a little bit about it. I know they're doing an Etch-a-Sketch competition. And from now until the event, you can go in and do your creation on Etch-a-Sketch, and you can bring in your own, or they'll have some there. And then, who's the judges for the Etch-a-Sketch? It's going to be popular vote okay. to pick the winners. And does anybody here remember Etch-a-Sketch? Oh yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And and yeah. the girls at the winery decided that they wanted to give the general public a chance to do some kind of innovative art. And they picked Etch a Sketch. I think they've got a few already. I oh yeah, very yeah, well happened. may have. Um, it's a fun idea, and uh, I haven't seen an Etch a Sketch in forty years probably. So it's nostalgia for those of us who are older, and something brand new for anybody who's under thirty years old probably. Um, the girls also have uh, a very good solid collection of art which is always on display at the winery um, and of course their their wines and their mead are excellent they are yeah yeah and then if you keep going on down um, the uh, North Main Street area has a lot going on and I'm gonna let Chris talk first about <laughs> that because one of the highlights of every fourth Friday is what Chris does at music art law well, I always have live music, and I have a different performer each uh, fourth Friday. So this one is going to be Chad Stafford Stephen, and he'll be performing some original songs. And uh, I have a featured artist, Anita Elsep, which most people know. She's very accomplished here in St. Jen and elsewhere. And then I also have the collection, the art collection of Bonnie Samuelson. So she'll have two tables, so it'll be very lively with the two of them there and the live music, which will be out in front inside, but you'll be able to hear it from the outside yes. and lots of shopping sales. And of course, the first glass of wine is free uh, just to get in the spirit. But that's really fun. And then, of course, Eclectics is right across the street. Yes. So you can hit us both right one after the other. 
And, and we're doing, um, I, I have quite a, quite a bit of new art in uh, this store, and we always have recorded music to play in between <laughs> Chris's music on Fourth Friday, and usually have some interesting visitors, and we would welcome anyone who would like to come. Our hospitality is, is um, considered pretty decent at Eclectics, uh, and of course, uh, Sam Conlon's uh, Only Child Originals and Rust will both be open. Sam w has been doing some acrylic pour art, right. relatively small pieces, and they are absolutely stunning. And then, of course, there's the handmade jewelry and uh, a variety of other artisan craft kinds of things in both of those stores. Uh, it's always an interesting place to go and, and look. Right. And Masquerade will be open, which is uh, a storefront next to Rust where people can go in and dress up in a variety of kinds of costumes and stand in front of a variety of kinds of sets and take photographs so that they have a souvenir and they're kind of making their own art for that evening. Um, that's really fun. I mean, even just to go in to see the costumes and the and the scenery, the backdrop, it's amazing. I mean, she's so artistic, and it's just a just a wonder of the senses when you go in there. So, I mean, it's such a fun event, the Fourth Friday, and it really does get a lot of people coming into town, and they look forward yeah. to it. I think every every month, there's something special this month too, and and it deals with. A different kind of art form because the Museum Learning Center is staging a classic car show that uh -huh. evening yeah. uh, and the, the Museum Learning Center is going to be open until 8 o'clock and the classic car show is scheduled from 6 to 6 to 8 I think um, and and I, I was having a conversation with someone the other day um, I'm old enough to have had my first car would now be considered a serious classic car. Um, the, the shape, the, the form of the older vehicles, um, uh, that some of them almost art deco in look in terms of the curves and the, the kind of detail that was put on them. And, and uh, I think that's going to be a lot of fun for people who maybe don't think of those cars as art, but I think they are. They're very pretty, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I'm glad yeah. to hear that they're joining in, too. That's nice. It is. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, Silver Sycamore is still undergoing... I'm looking at my list here. Uh, Silver Sycamore is uh, still undergoing renovation. Uh, they're in the midst of a, of a big remodeling project and will not be open. Um, but we think there's enough going on that it's going to be a really fun Fourth Friday. Um, I, I, I think anyone who hasn't attended a Fourth Friday will be surprised at how enjoyable it is and how relaxed. Mm -hmm. um, and you can walk or you can drive in St. Genevieve. Fortunately, parking isn't a real serious problem mm -hmm. most of the time. So you can drive the art walk if you want to, and stop and chat and meet people, have lovely conversations, and look at some very interesting, good art. We have a lot of talent in this town. That's for sure. Yeah. You know, that's one of the main things that drew me to St. Jen. Before I moved here, it was like two years before, and that's what I did, was going to an art walk. Actually, I bought this. Oh, <laughs> I forgot that I wore that. So, and I was just enamored with the town. It was like walking into a Hallmark little fairy tale kind of place, and everybody was out and going and having a good time. And I thought, this is really a cool town. And it hasn't disappointed me. I mean, since I've moved here in 2020, I just, everybody's been so warm and welcoming, and the artists, it's such a great artist community. Yeah, it I mean, is. Art, Iris, it you're really an artist, is. and we have yeah, all kinds of things anymore. going on. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And we have a writer's group now. We do. Uh, at Music Art Love. It's every third uh, Tuesday, and some of us are a part of that. And, yeah, we always have good things yes. going on. Yeah. yeah. You know, the art walk goes back a ways. Um, 
Mike Devaney was one of the people who first organized did, the art yeah. walk. And, and he dropped in for a, a visit to uh, Eclectics the other day, and we were talking about the olden days, which was before I was doing any painting when, when he got the art walk started. And um, I think it's important for us to keep it going. It's become something that um, is sort of a hallmark of our town, you know, because um, we have all the French history, people think of that as, this is the thing that they're best known for. And that's true, it is the thing we're best known for. But people sometimes aren't aware of the fact that back in the 1930s, there was a vibrant art colony here. Uh, Thomas Hart Benton taught at the Summer School of Art in St. Genevieve back in the 1930s and, and very early 40s. It lasted nine, ten years, I guess. And um, some of the art that was created during that period can be seen at various locations in right. town. The spirit of that group is sort of pervasive in town. Uh, I think we, all of us who dabble, feel a connection to those people who were here in the 30s uh, and, and it, trying to do something artistic and doing it right here. Yeah. <laughs> Do we mention it's from six to nine, right? It's from six to nine, yes. And almost everything, um, pretty much everything is free. I mean, if you're going someplace where they serve wine or food, of course, there's a, a fee for those kinds of things. But dropping in on places and chatting with people and having maybe a, 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 a snack or a complimentary glass of something. Um, and it's open to everyone. Children are welcome. And uh, in at least some places, small animals are welcome. Can't guarantee that everywhere. The restaurants won't do that. By the way, there's art also at, on our end of town at Oliver's Restaurant. Um, the, the art, some art by Terry Cavins is still in that building. And right. so for people who haven't had a chance to see Terry's art for a while, it's there some of it so yep and all the yep. restaurants are all the restaurants will be open yeah. yes yeah and people can make it a full day they can go to the antique mall beforehand stay go to dinner or do a quick mm -hmm. bite and then come doing the art walk or do dinner right. afterwards yeah yeah it's, yeah it's really fun and the tea shop is Brad going to be open? Did I did not hear from, from, hear from Brad me. about the tea shop. Yeah. Um, so, uh, uh, and then uh, I was trying to think if there was another place similar to his. I mean, not the ones down on Main Street. What are they? The coffee, the rooted coffee, coffee and rooted. Are they only morning? Rooted coffee. Um, is open on some fourth Fridays, and um, uh, I'm not certain that they're going to be open this fourth Friday. Um, but they're right down in our yeah. neighborhood, yeah, so, so, they're open, you, so there will be other things that will be open if they're not. Yeah. I was thinking if they didn't like the wine and stuff, they could go buy some coffee. Go yes, some coffee. and the coffee there is Our very tea good. Or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. Girls are doing a good job. We like okay. our end of town a lot. Um, and we have a lot going on in that 100 bl block of North Main. Um, we think of ourselves as the North Main Art and Entertainment District because we have lots of music, art and love. <laughs> we have lots of art uh, and artists and crafts down there. We have three restaurants, mm -hmm. and um, we, we think we're we're a pretty good place for people to come and have a good time. Does European entitlements are they open? They have not indicated that they will be open. They have. They usually aren't. And just so to there's piggyback. always something to do. <laughs> yes, <laughs> always. And as you know, I have yeah. the third Friday is open mic. 
at Music Art Love, and right. I always have some kind of singer songwriter doing a special showcase. Um, so that's always. I have about five events a month at Music Art Love, mm -hmm. and then of course Eclectics is right there, so you can pop on right over. Across the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. we always try to piggyback off each other. We so do, it's right. we yeah. do. Yeah. yeah. Chris has has um, brought in some really interesting talent, and one of the things that I like is that. She gives uh, local musicians mm. a chance right. to have a place to perform, uh, which I think is it's, it's an extension of that notion of this is an artistic community. We, we kind of present ourselves as a cultured community, and that has to do with all the history and that kind of stuff. Yeah. But we're also a fun place, we think, that that people can come and they can enjoy all of the serious stuff and then they can have a good time on Friday evening or Saturday evening. Right, and if you haven't heard the Fleegs for years, they show up at yeah. Music Art and Love. Yeah. yeah so and who's the other one that isn't there? His sister? Is that what you uh, Yeah. Yeah, we get lots of good talent. Oh, And yeah. some people come from St. Louis, um, Eureka, I mean, they're pretty becoming regulars that they drive right. just for yeah. the open mic. And Melissa's and, good. Yes, too. and what you can do spoken word, you can do dance, you can do acting. Um, the troupe from the upcoming musical, Your Good Man Charlie Brown, popped in at the last open mic and did a, a scene from their show, which is going to be Father's Day weekend up at the. Um, Valley do at the Valley at the Valley School, School. yeah, mm -hmm. in the gym. Yeah, so it'll be fun. I mean, we do. We have so many. We are an, we are an here. art community. We don't usually advertise ourselves that way, but we are an art community, and and thanks to programs like this one, I think even people in the community who aren't aware of that can find out that boy, there's some pretty interesting stuff going on here. Yeah, all right. And the Shabbities, they're really talented, the whole yes. family. Yes. Oh, yes. Plus, and they the drew in all the outside talent that they found, right. which is great. Yeah. 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 I imagine they'll be coming in to talk about the play. I would assume. Let's see. Yeah. That'll be Father's Day weekend. Is there a time that they can come in to talk? Um, not the sure. 14th, yes. The oh. 14th will oh, be great. open. Yeah. And she came last year. I mean, for the other, other place, one. For the yes, other one. Yeah. Yeah, she, yeah. yeah. In fact, I think there were several of them that came that were in the play. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I was yeah. one of them, I think. I was at the TV. I know I was in it. Right. <laughs> yeah, I didn't were. forget that much. You came, too. <laughs> you were here when they came. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. so, yeah. Okay, so does that cover? I think it does, and Friday? thank you for letting us come. Well, and you can come anytime you want. We're always happy to have <laughs> guests. <laughs> and and so. another event that's happening oh. on the the tenth, which mm -hmm. we're such a we we have such diversity in the community in terms of what it can offer people. That that's one of the the things that I think is really extraordinary. And you know, I was not born and raised here. I've been here 40 years, but um, I'm an incomer as opposed to a lifetime person. And one of the things that, that I've always felt about this town is uh, there's so many different kinds of things. Mm -hmm. you know, right. We're a big sports town. Uh, we're a big history town. We have art going on. Yeah, our girls just won a on. state championship yes. awesome. in softball. Yes. That is awesome. Yeah. yeah. And happened we've yesterday, got yeah. uh, a UTV and Jeep event coming up. Yeah, we do. Yeah. We sure yeah. do. And you know, you said that about the 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 multi different events that we do have, and it's kind of odd because you know this is our twelfth year of Spring for Down Center. It's not been a UTV and Jeep ride with the last five years right. of it. And um, I was afraid that we might have some people having some issues with us bringing UTVs and stuff to town. But after last year's event. We had so many restaurants in town that contacted us and thanked us, mm -hmm. and actually we had numerous people that came that won uh, 
prizes, you know, from the silent auction mm -hmm. that came from all over St. Louis and didn't even know about St. Genevieve until they came to the UTV, UTV ride oh. and they brought their family back that, that following Sunday. Well, it was an act, right? Yeah, because yeah, it was it was hard to believe, but, you know, I always just assumed, you know, because with being all the events and everybody seeing what was going on and how this brings a different type of people into St. Gen, but then in turn, they come down and love what they see and right. want to come back because those restaurants said they had bigger days than a weekend of Jerta Fett on and our that day. really good. Yeah, yeah. with our yeah. one event, that's just that easy. one year, yeah. which was tremendous. And that's what it's all about, because our, our event, a lot of people probably don't even realize it if you don't come and you're not a UTV or a Jeep rider, but every one of our people that come to the event gets a map of St. Genevieve. It tells all the town, all the stuff that goes on in town, all the uh, stores like yourselves and when they're open and their hours. We give them the information about that. We kind of give them a flyer about what St. Jen's all about. Uh, then they are getting stuff in their raffle baskets and stuff from St. Jen. Right. You know, all the vendors or the uh, stores just like yourself, uh, Chris, that just donated. And they, you know, see that and then they come back and do the shopping. So it is a win-win. I mean, at first a lot of people go, oh my gosh, you're doing this in a historic town. Well, not everybody's a historian and not everybody's an art bug, but you know what? They can become one or they come down and they see something that you all like or have you know they can buy stuff just as easy as as anybody else and until you bring some of them into town nobody knows it and they love um that when places are open on sundays oh yeah yeah, yeah. one of the yeah. one of the i think best things about your events is what they benefit oh yeah because this community has made a commitment to uh, challenged youth individuals and, and actually when you say youth it's odd uh, I'm, I'm in charge of the challenger sports uh, programs and stuff and at our baseball we've got for, uh, special needs uh, clients or players that is from probably in their six seven eight years old all the way up to close to 80. wow so wow. It, we yeah. don't yeah you know they they came from we've got Right now, we probably got from Perryville, probably 12 to 14, if not closer to 20 clients that come up from yep. Perryville that play, you know, for what we do in St. Genevieve. That's great. Yeah. So it, it is. It's a great thing. It is. It's mm -hmm. an, an it's an extraordinary thing for a town this size. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think you all, and UTV and Jeep runs are fun, but you all can be very proud of the larger picture of what you do here yeah because i mean we've we're one of the few towns even if you look just the surrounding towns uh cape doesn't have a special needs uh playground like we do they do not have a, a challenger uh synthetic baseball field there's hardly anybody else in the state of missouri that has that set up for their special needs and we've actually had numerous families that came to our event and talked to us about you know what we've got and they actually uprooted their families and moved to st genevieve yeah. We had three or four families that did that, mm -hmm. and that's just because uh, we got a tremendous school district for the special needs. Right. We've got all the ISLs and the group homes and the shelter workshop that all thrive because you know we got a great community to, to deal with it. So it is. It's. I appreciate you saying that because it's. It's something that it comes deep for me because Andrew was our inspiration for the last you know twelve thirteen yeah. years. So it's his. He's the one that got us started, and now we're going to keep it rolling because we, we can't, you know, our, my extended family, you know, they all call me coach, and I never coached anybody in my life, but, <laughs> but we have a great time doing it. So, you know, and it's neat. If you haven't ever seen or experienced it, we only got uh, two more weekends, I guess, uh, out of Challenger Baseball, and that would be the, the next weekend, not this weekend. The next weekend we skip for the Down Syndrome, and then we got one more after that. Yeah. But um, we are working on, I'm trying to get uh, bowling for our special needs. Oh, that would be. Oh. And even soccer going for our special needs. Because, uh, and then it's part of the money that we're working on with this is we're actually getting, and you don't realize it, but in, in, you're, when you're in high school or grade school with a special need, they got sanctioned coaches and you go to Special Olympics. Okay, as soon as you get graduated, guess what? No more Special yeah. Olympics. Yeah. And our, our our people love and, and love to do all that stuff. So we're already working on a sanctioned coach to be able to take 
anybody after the fact of graduating to uh, Special Olympics. And that's some of the funds that we... So our, our funds do a lot of things. I mean, we, we purchase a lot of handicap accessible stuff for the, uh, the community center and the water park to help them out. And then we promote all this stuff that we pay for it. And it's, it's kind of odd, too, because you don't realize it until you have a special need child. It affects your family and finance-wise that you never thought of. Because we've actually, when Kathy and I started basketball years ago, we had a family. And she called up my wife and said, hey, Kathy, I'm sorry, but the check's going to bounce, you know, for basketball. You know, we just, unfortunately, uh, is it all right if he continues to play? And we said, yes, don't worry about it. We took care of it. And from then on, we said, we can't have this happen because right. they got enough headaches, you know, just dealing with a yeah. person with special needs. They need to be able to just let them come and enjoy. So everything's free for them. They don't That's have to pay great. for anything. Yeah. T-shirts, uh, parties afterwards, uh, uh, events that we put on. I'm not so aware of any other community that has, of, of our size, that has made the kind of commitment that this community has made. You know, I haven't either. I mean, I, and I, I, I don't want to say I'm, you get around. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's, it's weird because, you know, we do have the, the coffee house and, and that is such a the inspiration that they do. And then our ISLs, you know, for independent living and our group home and what the, oh, the shelter workshops doing, you know, which is just, it's all tremendous. Mm -hmm. And it is a great thing, you know, because God gave us all these special needs people and we got to, you know, they've got some of them are so knowledgeable i got one gentleman that plays baseball he knows every baseball player on the cardinals knows all the status knows everything knows can remember my birthday remember my dad's birthday who's 94 oh and he's just sharp 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 on that stuff you know that's his niche can i hire him to help me remember things? <laughs> it would be good i wish he could remember me my things I, i'm bad at all that stuff too but it is it after you after you deal with them and what you get it's just unbelievable I mean, uh, I give my kids, my other two daughters, trouble because they get all bent out of shape. And, you know, if, oh, my God, my phone's dead. Or, oh, you know, we don't have cell phone reception. You know what? They don't have those things usually. You know, and they're happy. That's one thing I miss the most is he was never, never upset. Always, my son, Andrew, he was, he, he like the, the sign says here, if you, when you can't, Find the sunshine, be the sunshine. He was the sunshine. He was. Yes, he I mean, was. and we didn't realize it until, like, the memorial that the schools built for him out there at Challenger Baseball Field. If you haven't seen something really, really neat, the class of 2020, I guess it was, whenever he graduated, yeah. uh, they built a memorial out there at the entrance to our Challenger Baseball Field in memory of him. And it's that beautiful. That is so beautiful. Oh, it is. It's just plum amazing. And I didn't realize he touched that many people, you know, but... You know, but it's it's a great thing. It is. It's it's tremendous how many people he's touched and and uh, how he's inspiring us. And now we've got a bigger crew of people that wants to help with our fundraiser and expand it bigger and better and, and everything from here on out. So in That's addition yeah. to seeing cool vehicles mm -hmm. and having some fun and probably drinking a little beer. <laughs> <laughs> people who come to the UTV and Jeep event, even just to watch it, are going to be supporting one of the best things this town does. Yep. I appreciate that. And it is. It's a, it is a great thing. And uh, uh, if you haven't been at our event, you know, it, it kind of, we grew out of the KC Hall. The KC Grounds was a tremendous place. They helped us start it from the beginning. But now since we outgrew that, because last year we had 440 UTVs and 48 Jeeps, um, this year we're expecting a hundred plus more of each, uh, wow. and the so fairgrounds is have perfect. Four starts then, instead of three. <laughs> yeah. And what's neat too is uh, we go to places that a lot of people don't realize it's even out there. We're going out. This one's 58 miles, and I'm not going to tell you the route because we always like to keep it kind of hush hush until you get there. But it goes. Last year went north. The year before that it went south. This year it's going west. And so it's neat. These people come that, especially the people from out of town, you know, come in to see St. Genevieve. They see St. Genevieve. They see the beautiful territory around it, and they fall in love with it. Right. So it is. It's a, it's a good thing. And that's how, why a lot of people move to town. They are. Because they come here for a weekend, and they just like the peace and the whatever. Oh, yeah. There. Yeah, and we're spoiled because, I mean, I, I've been lucky enough to be in here, live here all my life. You know, I'm only... 
25 or 6 or something like that, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe double and a half more, I don't know. But uh, I remember everybody giving us trouble because you used to never have a stoplight, never had a Walmart, you know, and now we had two stoplights, so we're a big town, you know. <laughs> but, well, so, we had that one up on the corner up by your place that oh. never worked, <laughs> made everything confusing, so Was they got rid of it. Oh, it must have been before I moved here. It was. It was yeah. a long time ago. Long, long time ago. It was a mess. <laughs> <laughs> now, I know you have live music happening at yes. your event. And who, who's playing? Okay, this year it's it's kind of a unique setup. Um, the one band is uh, from locals from here in town, which is Southern Gypsy, which is Brian Boyer and a bunch of them. And that's, this is one thing that amazes me, because I don't go out and promote for bands. They come to me every year. I got bands already lined up for next year that want to play. Oh, really? And Gary. they donate their time to do what they're doing. Okay, so Southern Gypsies, Brian Boyer, uh, local band, tremendous group. Okay, if you look at the top of the flyer there, it says Boyfriend. Okay, Boyfriend, just give me an age a little bit. They played when I was 20, 21, 22. They're in their 60s now, but they play only one time a year up in St. Louis. And the venue that they play at Sell out, sold out last year in two hours. Oh my gosh. Chuck, which is Brian Boyer's brother-in-law, got a hold of me at the, the Friday Music, Winter Music Festival, and uh, it was just a little while, I guess maybe three months after Andrew passed, and he talked to me for a while, and he got a hold of me in the middle of the following week. He says, we're all in. I said, you're all in for what? <laughs> he goes, we're going to come down and play. And I said, you're kidding. And wow. it's like, no. So it's it's... Like that, they're from all over St. Louis. Um, the boyfriend band, Southern Gypsies, all from around. Locals from around here. So, you know, we're here. We are bringing great music from uh, from all over, and they do play f anywhere from country rock all the way up to the harder rock and roll up there. And that's going to be all. That's going to be from three o'clock in the afternoon till whenever they want to quit. I guess that night. Yeah. What time uh, does the event? really go uh the event actually if you've never been involved with the our event it's kind of starts at 9 30 within 9 30 is more uh, two things are happening the sign up for the utvs is going on and in the the youth building this time when you're signing up for the the um, oh you have to bring your insurance and and all your papers to get signed up when you sign up we've got the special needs coffee house is going to be up there uh selling uh, pastries and stuff that they've oh, got. Yeah, yeah. Then um, at that same time, it's called My Triumph Bikes. And a lot of people don't know what My Triumph Bikes are, but they're actually, if you're uh, seeing a, an athletic person that runs, has a running stroller, okay, yeah. think of them on steroids because these things can handle up to three, four hundred pound people. Oh. And what they do is it's for special needs that they can actually ride in that event or that bike and there's classified kind of like a race to go this year it's going to go from the baseball field right by the oh the fairgrounds oh, up okay. to the river and back and it is not really a race it is an enjoyable walk they do some weaving in and out and make it fun for the special need you know clients it's going to be there and then when they get back the bounce houses the clowns the superheroes the um Oh, all of the kitty stuff starts. Okay, that stuff starts right around about the 10, 30, 11 o'clock range. And that's still when the UTV uh, people are still getting signed up. Because they, you can come up there, or say for instance, you wanted to ride, and you come up there at 9.30, and if you and Dave want to take off on, a, on the ride right off that time, you can. But you can leave all the way up to noon. So instead of having a follow the leader like a lot of UTV rides are, ours is if you and four or five other come up at a certain time you want to leave uh, and then uh, go to the different stops and come back then you can just got to be back up there by four o'clock oh. so you can do it at your own leisure it's not a follow leader it's not uh, you got to be doing card game and stuff because we found out too that with a lot of this everybody's religion is a little bit different and it's not gambling on this because we actually have games to play and so if if I'm good at this game I can get higher points or lower points and then each stops a different game so it's not the same game and then the neat thing is too is if I've got I'm just using round numbers a thousand points might be high might not be 
you get to win, uh, say, $500, or if you get the lowest points, which could be five points or whatever, you know, you can win 250 But all the people in between, if there's 600 there's going to be almost 200 pie attendance prizes in between. So you can end up having 343 points and actually walk away with a shirt, a Kula cup, a gift certificate for $25. You know, so the people don't just play for the highest and lowest. You play to enjoy the ride, enjoy the atmosphere, and then come back and who knows, you don't have to have the highest hand or the lowest hand or the highest amount of number or lowest amount of numbers. Any number can win. And then when they come back, that's whenever... The silent auction kicks in a little bit more, and the oral auction really kicks in because the oral auction usually starts about uh, four to five, depending upon how much products we have. So, it, I mean, it's it's a full day event with, besides the UTV ride, there is um, cornhole going on, there is a poker stand, there is um, a mega truck car truck crash, which is something neat for the kids. They actually, it's basically like monster trucks. That they're crawling over cars. Oh yeah, we got that going on. We got an antique. If you're into antique tractors, or uh, like an antique sawmill, or antique ice cream machines, they've got all that stuff going on. Um, we got, I think, seven different food trucks this year. So hopefully, we'll be able. So to there won't be a chicken dinner this year. It'll be food trucks. Correct. Yeah. Correct. They sold out last year, and that's why we they went all throughout town, which is tremendous. Uh, <laughs> but. We offered it to the KCs, and with us moving the venue, it wouldn't wasn't really practical for right. them. So uh, that's when we started checking in food trucks. And we do we went to local uh, people first. I think there's actually four. The KCs is doing pork burgers and hot dogs, but there's uh, three other local uh, food trucks, and then there's uh, three out of town that's oh, coming that's in. That's good. Yeah, I which is. That sounds like a great event. Oh, it it is, and it keeps getting bigger and bigger and and crazier, which is. It's all good for, like you said, a great cause, and yeah. that's the main reason we're doing what we're doing. So, for the food, is there places to sit then? Yes. That yeah, there's going to be tables and stuff. chairs and stuff set up underneath some of the uh, pavilions. If you need air conditioned area, the youth building is going to have that set up so that you can eat in air condition. Oh. Okay. Um, there's going to be, I think, three or four locations out on the grounds that's going to be covered that you can sit in and oh, eat. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. yeah. So it, it should be. It's kind of like a um, our own little baby version of a uh, affair, because you know it's it's one day, but what we're putting on is is probably going to uh, be as big as some of the stuff that the fair puts on, because we got a lot of vendors. When I say vendors, if you're a UTV or a G person, you're in heaven because there's going to be <laughs> multiple companies that's bringing their stuff that's for oh, sale. That's good. We yeah. got. Uh, uh, like I'm just using Serdike Yamaha or the Pettis Ford. They're bringing vehicles and stuff in. There's a, a company from uh, southern part of Missouri called Outdoor Armor that's bringing their stuff in. And then there's Ron Rhodes. It's got a UTV that's I think he said last year was like had was worth ninety two thousand dollars. He and he's put stereo systems in and all this electric over hydraulics oh, and yeah. stuff. So and we got all that stuff being showed. Of course we do have a cruise in for cars, so you can bring your cars trucks, motorcycles, bring them all up there. Um, we got the sheriff's department being involved with, you know, the fingerprinting and showing off their stuff. The ambulance is going to be there showing off their stuff. So it's, like I said, kind of KC Hall just in an expanded version, you know, so it's... You it's, love you, KC Hall. I think so. I think so. Yeah. And it's what's nice this year is um, at the KC Hall, um, I think there was like 10 tents. And every one of them I had to put up and all the bounce houses and all that stuff I had to take care of and put them up. Up there, the buildings are built. And I think I got one tent to put up and we got a company coming in and doing all the kids' stuff so that I don't have to be able to... Well, that would just save you a lot of time. Oh, yeah. A ton of time. Because <laughs> last, last year it was on Father's Day weekend and I spent all day Father's Day in there tearing down. <laughs> it was a, a long like day. <laughs> It sounds like this is destined to become one of our signature events in uh, St. Genevieve. I'm hoping. And, yeah. and, and the big thing is I wanted it in memory of Andrew because yeah. he's the one that started this all. Right. You know, far as he's the one that did the inspiration to, to, to do this. Um, and, oh, a couple of neat things that I forgot to even mention, too, is, okay, with this event, you know, if you guys both give a check and you want to give a check to Challenger Sports and you want to give a check for Down Syndrome, we got two event, two 
fundraisers kind of going to one. The Challenger Sports stays in town. That's what helps maintain or keep all of our Challenger stuff going on. But with Andrew being Down syndrome, and we got a ton of people that I think we got four thousand something dollars already that people donated for the Down syndrome Association. It goes to, in his name. So all the years before, you know, Andrew always got to be out on the baseball field. Right. Okay. From here on out, it's going to be a person with Down syndrome from St. Genevieve in Andrew's name is going to get to go up there. So we're going to be yeah. taking a family each year, oh, you know, that's with, right. yeah, the, with Down syndrome up there in Andrew's name. So I thought that's kind of neat. That you is know? neat. Yeah. Yeah. So people can always donate like throughout the year, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it's a year-round thing. And oddly enough, our house turns into the day after our event, we get people still already donating. We've got numerous, uh, when you said art and stuff, I've got numerous art pictures that... Um, I think of her name. She lived on Main Street uh, in a big house down there by past the vertical log home. Her dad was uh, a big instigator in the Jurta Fat. Uh, I'm terrible at names, so I'm going to hopefully she doesn't watch this and <laughs> kick me. <laughs> That's but, okay if you forget. But, that. Um, yeah. She donated uh, a ton of their pictures that her and her husband took and they put it on canvas. Oh, of multiple okay. sizes and we had so many of them that we keep so many of them and or put so many of them out a year oh, and with okay. other things and okay. she's been doing that stuff for i guess last three or four years and we've got my basement one room storage room basically is a storage room for the event that's just wrapped clock that keeps coming in which is a great thing you know because mm -hmm. uh if people's got stuff they want to donate all the way up to the event you know definitely just drop it by marzuko electric or you can definitely give me a holler at, you know, 314-808-2828, which would work out. A um, couple other things we are doing with the funds, we're just working on this too, is we're going to start uh, having two scholarships a year, one for Sage and one for Valley. And if, a, if a, a student is going into any kind of special education, they can put their name in the hat, and we're going to be doing a, a, a scholarship for one for each school. So that's, that's yeah, in Andrew's name, of course. Um, I know we've got uh, a lot of different things that we're going to be selling up there. We do have our UTV shirts. They've changed, of course, some. Uh, we've got uh, cooler cups. We've got UTV stickers, which is a big thing. If you're a UTV or they, whenever you go to them, everybody buys a different sticker from every place they go. We do have, and I don't know if we can see this, but we've got... Uh, he can put one on it, yeah. Uh, Memorial stickers from Andrew, and this is actually a flag. And what was neat about this is um, when Andrew passed, we had, I think it was 43 UTVs that in pouring down rain uh, that rode, they said, his last ride. And they, they had a bunch of these flags on all their things. And these are going to be for sale then also. So so we're, we're trying to, um, I guess, try to bring in more money with, from the unfortunate thing that happened, but to help hopefully all the other families that does have special needs that, that we need to benefit from it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I've probably yeah. missed. Every stranger that comes to town that goes in common ground, I think they all just love it. Oh, yeah. Because you talk to any of them that are in there and they're like, this is the neatest place. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it is. It's, it's tremendous. And they are doing more and more and more of themselves. You know, um, so when you go in, it might not be perfect looking this or that. But you know what? It was made by those clients right there. And it's all delicious. Don't take, oh, don't it, take is, it wrong. Yeah. It's all great food. But, I mean, it's not about all the... Uh, what do you call it? The or the appearance. It's more about yeah, yeah. the, the, the experience. Yeah, you can't yeah. eat the wraps. Well, they, everything, oh. the soup, the wraps, the breakfast, Sam. Things they're making now. Oh yeah, yeah it's those great. things are really good. Yeah, right. and I'm proud of them. Great I mean, I'm glad speech. to be part of that too because we bought that building. God, might be six years ago or so. And we had that vision to try to do that, and it took a little bit to get going, but now it's going. So, I mean, so far... Now we need an elevator that goes upstairs. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we need one of those chairs. You can't do that anymore, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, an elevator would be better. 
<laughs> the only problem is there's not much room in that I building. Know. That's the bad thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they even do their own little art, you know, on Friday, the fourth oh, Friday yes. art. Did you guys see the art display that they had down there? Not not during one of your fourth Fridays, but I'm trying to remember what it was, it when was, the date was. But they actually yeah. showed off a bunch of their yes. stuff, which is yeah. great. Yeah, and it was, a, I think, on a fourth Friday, and it was very successful. Yeah, it was. Lots of people. One of the teachers yeah. of St. Jen did at Kime, wasn't it her? that mm -hmm. took care of it. Yeah. Miss Christie? Yeah. Yeah, she's... She's a godsend. I mean, uh, we, it took a lot of different people to make Andrew what he was, but he, she was one that helped out tremendously. She, the, the things that they went on with, and, um, I'm sorry, my, my daughter was calling me. So I don't know. <laughs> well, yeah, man. <laughs> she may be calling to tell you that you forgot to say yeah, something. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, that's what I was kind of wondering. I wish, see, I'm out in the country. We don't get to see this. Um, I wonder what, how You can many go people... on YouTube. Oh, you can go on YouTube? Yeah, like oh. he'll have it on there, not tonight, but tomorrow it'll be on. Oh, well, see. I so he there. can I tell you that. what time. <laughs> but yeah, it's on YouTube. Oh, good. Okay. Actually, when... Uh, um, the Dorn and what's her first name? Justine Dorn and Ron Raphael were on. They both have a million followers. Oh my gosh. And then uh, Candy Mc McEarren, she was on the same night and she's already got 10,000 because she's, well, probably now she's got 20 or 30. Because wow. she's kind of hooked up with them. Uh -huh. Well, we had calls from New York and from Oklahoma and from other some other place. People calling in to talk to them. Uh -huh. Wow. It was, that is I awesome. think there was like 50 people on there at one time. <laughs> that is great. So, so they it got, does reach out to the They people. got a count. Yes. Yes, it does. And when years ago when they were over in, uh, what country was that? When they went... One of them where they were fighting, the soldiers were over there, some boys from town, mm -hmm. and they watched it all the time. Because they were, you could, at that time they could track, but then they quit tracking, what, two years later, something yeah, like that. I think it was. They, and because it costs more to do that. Sure. But now they're doing it again with the YouTube, they can tell. Yeah. Well, that's good. So, yeah, we get out, but there's not always a lot of people calling in. So that was right. great last week when they were, I mean, the last <laughs> show that they were on, uh -huh. they were calling in and calling. Oh, and uh, Kate, Katie was here from the extension too. So everybody on the, that would call in would call her the garden lady. Because <laughs> 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 she was talking about all, you know, plant and different stuff sure. and different varieties of everything. So, yeah, but you can go on YouTube and pick up, if you put in what's new, uh -huh. It should come up, and then you can pick what date. You put in a date every two weeks of the month, the second and fourth week of the month. If you put that date in, it'll pop up. Oh, yeah. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, so you can pass it on that way, having people watch. Sure. Tell them, you know, go on YouTube and watch whatever date that you're on, and then all these people that are from out of town that are coming on the uh, UTVs and that. Uh -huh. Well, that's one thing that it's kind of different too that we're doing. Uh, you never would have thought that, you know, where Jurta Fett is down underneath the Moses Austin, that turns into a campground. Right. Uh, I think we got 24 or 26 spots down there, which we only have three left. And then we got 16 of them up at the fairgrounds, and all of those are booked. And those are people coming from, like I said, I think before we were talking before it started, we got people coming from Tennessee, Kentucky, and the eastern side of Illinois, mm -hmm. I know for sure. And then this year we're going to see if whoever comes the farthest is going to get a, uh, a St. Gen basket that's going to have all just stuff about St. Gen. Yeah, that's so neat. they can figure out, see all the different things and have some free, you know, stuff so they can actually yeah. go around the, the following day or two and, and enjoy the, Yeah, you know, so the, the, city. Ci the city should uh, do the, or who owns that now, the county or the city, the old rest home. Rest home. Because there's concrete oh, up there, yeah. self-contained, we could park up there. That's actually where the non-electric sites are, and I think we've got four or five campers oh, there. Oh, you already are using yeah. that. Well, that's good. I wish yeah. they would turn it into something like that, because yeah. I've that we're an avid nice. camper, and we've got people that's always going, you know, well, can we camp there? It's like, well, Han State's about the closest. 
you know, but we could turn it into like a little Herman, you know, Herman up there. Their right. city park is set up for camping, and then they got yeah. trolleys that go from there throughout town of Herman and into the wineries. Yeah. So that would be something good to do. Yeah. I know I, I don't say it enough, but it, the town is tremendous. We appreciate the support. The people that we've got that joined whenever um, we did the UTV, I can't say enough to uh, Sherry and Leroy Willett. And they brought a crew of people that just mind boggles me. The the school, St. Jen's School up there, we've got, uh, I think there's six kids every two hours for the whole day that's donating their time. Isn't that great? Oh yeah, it's yeah. just, it's it's amazing, like we were saying, how this community does and what they do and how they support They probably them. get service hours for that. They do. Too. Yeah. And that's what's nice about it. And it's what's nice even with, if you've got kids that need service hours, Challenger bas basketball, Challenger baseball, I can sign off. And all you gotta do is come out and have fun. I mean, you're like a Challenger baseball, you need to be a buddy. You help. To yeah, you help the, their position. Yeah. Correct, and sometimes you got to help guard them because some of those guys can actually. Uh, there's Michael Besner that can actually hit it out of our oh, softball really? field where the oh, valley plays. Gosh. Yes, so they there is some guys <laughs> that actually can hit the ball too. So yeah, you know, and we do have like I say, women, uh, kids, girls, boys, right. all ages that's out there, which is just it's really neat. Really that is. is, and I I gotta th say thank you to. The city along with the uh, police department and the sheriff's department because what's odd we went on a, a ride out in um, if you ever know where Bass River Resort or the who's all Valley is out there oh, it, yeah. uh, we went on a ride out there and their ride is a little bit different than ours but they had like 1500 UTVs and one of the communities out there makes you pay for a sticker for to go on their road $25, and I think the road was less than, I don't know, maybe less than a mile. Oh and my gosh. what's tremendous about our city lets us do it without having to get stickers. Our county lets us do it without stickers. The police department uh, is there to keep an eye on making sure everything goes good, but they're all open and know, and we give them a route of where we're going so they kind of know who, what, where. But every UTV rider has to do, when they sign up and do the insurance and their waiver, they get a device put on their UTV that shows that you're part of our event. So that if you don't have that on your UTV, then you know that the, the police or whoever knows that that's not a person that's involved in our event, you know, that they just jumped in. And that's what we don't want to do. I mean, it's cheap enough as it is. Truthfully, our event, you ride, you can actually come up there and ride for free, which we hope you don't because we hope you buy uh, the playing cards or the game right. tickets. They're only ten dollars a piece, and last year we sold one thousand one hundred thirty-eight tickets. Oh my! Wow! At ten dollars a piece, if you can do the math, and out of, out of all that, less than two hundred dollars was given back. All the rest was donated to the cause. So that's great. Oh, it is. It's yeah. it, that's again uh, yeah. our community and the surrounding communities what they do for you know for our special needs or what they do for the event, which what makes it all great. And we do have a 501c, so that if you need to get, you know, tax-wise, you can need the paper. Just let me know, and I'll get you a copy of it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a great event. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I got though. Yeah. So all the baskets and things are going to be inside the youth building. Correct. Yeah. So when you actually come into the youth building, you'll be coming in, and we're going to have the coffee house greet you. Uh, with pastries and stuff then you the outside walls is going to be uh, completely surrounded by baskets I think last year we had 90 almost 100 baskets that was donated and then before you leave the event or that hall that's when you sign up and and uh, make sure you, we got our, your insurance and your cards and and all the stuff you need to do for the ride uh, while you're in there we do have the t-shirt sales the um, we got a lot of other raffles like uh, you got the some tickets there with the 50-inch flat screen and some cardinal tickets, and then we've got a couple other booze coolers and things that's going on. But then after you walk out of that and walk by where the oral auction stuff is, you'll take a, a nice leisurely walk down past all the food trucks where the first game is, 
So you do the first game, then you will take a walk back through, and then you get on your UTV up at the top of the hill. Oh, and so the off. very first game is at the yeah side. first and last. Yeah, we've got three stops. Uh, one's out in Ozora area. Uh, one is, and I guess I could say because they just put it on Facebook the other day, is uh, Charlottesville Winery is uh, talking about they they're doing one of the stops and talking about a, a great group of people there. If you don't know Kara. Nagger and them, they do a tremendous job and stuff. Uh, that's a stop, and then we got another stop just right past Cave Winery in that area, and then back here. So it's, it'll be a fun ride. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it's like I said, it's 58 miles, so it should be a, a nice long ride for everybody. And looking in the long range forecast, it looks like it's going to be sunny, not rain. We don't usually need to be blessed with that again. <laughs> yeah. I think the first 10 years of our event, it rained every Yes. People can still drive, right? They just yeah. get a little. Yeah, because yeah. most of the UTVs don't have tops, so the Jeeps don't have their tops. But back before, whenever, before the Jeeps, we kind of do the trending of what's popular at that time, because horseshoes was popular when we first did it, and bicycles was popular. So we had a big bike ride, and we had horseshoes. Well, horseshoes is still popular, but not as cornhole, so that's why we're doing cornhole. And then nobody, especially all of us old folks, don't ride bikes no more. We <laughs> ride UTVs. So we kind of moved it into to that scenario. And they probably enjoy the UTVs more so than the bikes anyway. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, I think the most bikes we ever had was like in the 70-something uh, range. And the first year we did this, we had over 100, I think 110. And each year it's been going almost by 100 plus each year so we're hoping planning it's great for it's wonderful. 600 plus maybe 700 uh, see how lucky we are <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be an interesting weekend here with oh, yeah. the with that event going on and the french festival also going yeah. on it sort of the two faces of saint genevieve <laughs> you know? um, and 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 that's a good thing i think it's really neat that people get an opportunity to see how different different segments of our community are because I think that's one of the really good things about St. Genevieve sort of there's something for everyone there it is mm -hmm. yeah. yeah there is that was Mary Ann's favorite saying if you can't find anything to do you're not trying or something like that yeah. in St. Genevieve you can't tell me you can't that. find anything to do in St. Genevieve yeah. you can yeah. find something to do all the time yeah. that's what you always say <laughs> yeah that is true. And I, I'm going to please ask you guys again then to make sure so we don't collide on any of that. But what's neat that Kathy, whenever that year that we did collide because of the flood, um, that year Kathy contacted me and said it was not her complaining. She said because it actually helped her event out a bunch. It's unfortunate that their opening ceremony in our <laughs> Ride oh, kind right. of flooded. <laughs> yeah, well, they, with us having to change our route, we had to go kind of in some oh. area where they were at. So now we kind of got that yeah. fixed. Yeah. So, so it works great. out. So she yeah. did say they're blocking off Main Street June 10th from 5:30 to 9. Oh, okay. 5:39. North Main Street, but she didn't tell me what how Portion. far. Okay. Yeah. Hopefully, it's not any farther than the uh, Audubon. Towards yeah. your guys' yeah. store. I would think that it yeah, would not be. So. It would just be those two blocks. Okay. Uh, and maybe just Merchant to yeah, and, and maybe just uh, Jefferson to okay. Washington uh, by the the little park. Okay. Yeah. So we'll keep our event, our ride, coming down, but not going as far as you guys then. And we'll make sure we don't send any crazy French enthusiasts <laughs> up there unless they bring their own Jeep. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> and we're even, oddly enough, we're working on that. I've got a venue that uh, they don't, don't have it ready for this year, but, uh, you know, like yourselves, if you don't have a UTV, they're going to have them available to, to rent oh. to go on a ride. And I thought yeah. that's kind of neat because, again, yeah. if you never had a UTV, you don't realize how much fun they are. You know, and it's basically a, a glorified Jeep or a not as fancy but as a Jeep. you don't know how to drive one either if you've uh, never had one, yeah. right? Right. And they're automatics. Okay. <laughs> it's See, like it's automatic. Automatic. Yes. Yes. stay off the streets. <laughs> <laughs> they're automatic. You put it in gear and hit the gas pedal. Uh, okay. 
<laughs> so see, you need to come up and check them out that Sunday, or that Saturday, <laughs> and see what you think. It's going to be a good weekend. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a good weekend. It definitely is. So we got good weather, That's it's going to be a win, win, win. And before all of that, the excitement that's happening before all of that is the fourth Friday Art Walk, which is this coming Friday, 6 to 9, scattered around downtown St. Genevieve. Um, lots of restaurants open, lots of shops open, and music, music, music. <laughs> that's good. And the ones that stay all night on uh, Friday night. Common Grounds is open for breakfast. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah, do a pretty good job with us with the crowd. A couple of times they were kind of overwhelmed because <laughs> we were going there that on crowd. Friday. So many people coming in, and yeah. I just get overwhelmed. <laughs> yeah, we've even got people coming in as early as Thursday. Oh, really? Yeah, and going to stay throughout Monday. So um, it would be neat to see St. Genevieve have a campground set up, but I'm just appreciative that. The Jordan Fed Committee donates the ground right. and the fair board lets us do what we're doing up there, you know, because uh, again, we are bringing people from all over the place, right. which is it's good. And that's good advertisement, good Oh yeah, exposure for St. Genevieve. It is. Yeah. It really is. And this is one of the first years I gave Happy some trouble. Because I said it, <laughs> you know, it's weird to call him happy, but it is, yeah. it is happy. But it I is gave happy. him some trouble because I always went to the city to get it all okayed. And until last year when it, they actually set up and said, wow, this thing does benefit St. Genevieve. Now they're promoting it because all the years before it never was promoted. You know, it was kind of like the, what yeah. do you call it, the... The bad kid in the family, you know, <laughs> keep them out of the sight, out of mind, so maybe yeah. nothing will happen. But I think they realize that, you know, it brings people to town, and they, after they yes. see it, they fall in love with it, and then they come back again. Yeah. You know, because not everybody's history or art until they see it, and then they, like yourself, you came to town, and then you fell in love with it. So, boom. Yep. You know, so bring them to town. And, and try to get them here. Yeah. Whatever it takes to get them here. Mm -hmm. Sure is. And uh, I was trying to think there was somebody. Oh, I opened my mouth and inserted foot again. You know, I don't do that very much. I was so. No, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I went to the <laughs> went to the fair board meeting. And I was talking the same thing about being promoted, and I said I have no idea who the new tourist director is and stuff. And, and I'm hoping that I can meet them because I didn't know if it was a gentleman or. And she looked, she taps me on the shoulder. She said, <laughs> I go, she was right next to you. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> yeah. So we got off on the right foot, I guess. The wrong foot, I don't know, but it's all worked out. So there, she's even promoting us now, too. So it's it's a great thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So good. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. You guys got something else that you need to elaborate on? Did Kathy give you any information on the 10th? Just about the time that they'll close off Main Street, part of Main Street from 5.30 to 9. Hmm. But, um, so the next time you do this isn't until it's too late, right, to promote it? Yes, because it's the 14th is our next okay. show, yeah. We try to reach out to everybody, but. It's hard, I'm It's sure. hard. Oh, yeah. yeah. Especially since it's not every week, it's every other week. Every other week, and right. Some people like myself, forget, or, yeah. <laughs> oh no, Iris, I got to get there. Yeah. And the French Heritage Festival. Hey Chip, Festival. you better come on tonight yeah. or you're going to miss it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But I know the French Heritage Festival on June 10th, they'll have things during the day yes. and then at night they'll have music downtown and but it'd be great to go both. You know, oh yeah. So you can, yeah. that's like what's you said, get a variety either. and there's somebody that that isn't aren't interested in the art, they can go to yours or Vice enjoy versa. both. And yeah. people I went to who are at too. your place who don't want sausages can come and have beignets. Then, yeah. <laughs> They're going to look at you and go, what? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> That's right, because uh, Oliver's is doing a special yeah. menu. And yeah. Yeah. Of them I, I think the Lions Club's even doing some yeah. stuff then too for yeah. the French Heritage Days. It's going to be a very good festival. Okay. I'm glad to hear it. It's a lot of fun. And I know there's even the bee festivals that's coming up. Yeah. Uh, the honeybee festival, and then of course our Jura Fat that's coming up. And I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Which Thanks. I have to say, Chip is amazing during Jura Fat. He donates his 
time and energy to get us all electrified. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll do that. It's a busy weekend, that's yeah. for sure. <laughs> but it is. It's that's one thing that's neat about it too is um, you don't realize the people and how much they appreciate it until you you know like Chris just did because I mean there's a lot of us that's out there that do this kind of stuff and you don't you know it's just kind of like almost like a we've been doing it forever it's just gonna you know kind of falls into sometimes, place. sometimes yeah. you're yeah. just yeah. assuming like oh yeah uh, Marzuko Electric's taking care of it it's like well no he's donating his time <laughs> to do this he's not getting paid for this no so. and it's a little bit of a fun long weekend but I mean it's for a good cause too. <laughs> so Lots of things to do in St. Genevieve yeah. mm -hmm. year round. Yep. Lots of good events. That is true. Yeah, yeah when Pete, when you volunteer, it, it's a good feeling. Yep, you do. And that's one of the biggest, best things that I get out of with special needs. Because, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. when uh, we play baseball on Saturdays, I get probably about 60 to 70 hugs and all thank yous. You know, you don't get anybody <laughs> complaint. <laughs> and they don't care if they strike out or if they hit the ball. or. If and that's a good thing. It is yeah. a good thing. That's a it's good a great thing. thing. Yeah, and I know it was, my wife and I was talking about this, I mean, basketball started up Jan the end of January, unfortunately Andrew's passing was on December 3rd, and it was the hardest thing for us to do it, but there was about eight or ten families that went out of their way to say a special thank you to us because their kids couldn't have done without it, right. and it's weird because, you know, you think, oh, they all get exercise, they all do this, no they don't. I mean, some of the, the kids don't do any of that stuff. We've lost a couple over COVID that uh, they didn't do nothing but sit on their tail, you know, and there was nothing activity-wise for them to do. And the one poor guy can't walk no more. He's in a wheelchair, and before we had him out playing basketball. But, you know, so... Yeah, sitting it, is well, not good. No, no, you got to get up even when you... Do you ache a little bit, right, Iris? I ache all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta keep getting get get up, moving, keep going. Yeah. That's what mom used to always say. You don't move it, you lose it. <laughs> that is true. I think in your case, you're moving too much. <laughs> I don't think you ever get to stop. <laughs> no, no, it is. It's nonstop. And uh, at times you kind of get home and you look at, look over at Kathy or something and go, is this really right? <laughs> We're sitting here doing nothing at 8 or 9 o'clock at night. You know. <laughs> But it is. Speaking it's, of eight or nine o'clock, I'm going to have to do, excuse myself. Oh, well, we can actually, if nobody has anything else to say or talk about, I'm we just, can actually just say good night to everyone. I'm going to run down my list here. Make you know. sure you got everything included. Yeah. yeah. And we'll make a final pitch for Fourth Friday, which is the next big thing coming up this coming Friday, six to nine o'clock. You can start at either end of town and find interesting things to see and do. Right. And actually the next night, if I can put a personal plug for Music Art Love, we're having live music again on Saturday night. Kiki Wow from Farmington, she'll be um, playing some original songs um, in the back room of the gallery. So. All right. Yeah, you have coming. a neat place down there. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I'm glad you expanded and went to your yes. new venue. It's yes. nice. Yeah. It worked out good. He didn't have to crawl, crawl up steps anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I kept saying, almost there, Iris. We have just one little step. Uh, on my end, I'll just do a quick run about then too. Again, if anybody wants to donate uh, cash or uh, baskets to promote your business or anything else, you know, definitely just call Marzuko Electric at 883-5347 uh, or drop it off. Um, the My Triumph bikes, it is open for people to sign up. So uh, if you know of anybody with special needs from little to, to, to larger to young to, or old, they can ride. All you need to do is get a hold of me so we can make sure we got enough riders and they got enough angels to, to push them. Um, we, like I was saying earlier, there is a mega truck car crush that's going to be going on. Uh, Chris Kurtz is bringing World War II equipment in. Uh, the mega truck car crush is Myron uh, Nagger and his son. Um, we got uh, 
I know one thing that we don't see a, as much as I wish, but I wish the, the car cruisers and stuff would come up. We probably got, I know of about 15 or 20 um, different show, cars that's showing up and we've got the fairgrounds now so we can show that. We do have uh, the go-kart series that's down south of St. Jen. They come up and show off their uh, race cars. And then um, what's neat is Andrew was a, a, a big time racer. He loved race cars. He's on probably six different race cars with his uh, memorial stickers oh, and neat. in over five different states right now that's uh, promoting that. And the race cars are welcome. You know, we got a lot of them that display their cars. Um, the cornhole is going to be going on. Sign up. There's going to be multiple cornhole tournaments, but the first one's at noon. I think the second one's at maybe about four o'clock. Uh, that's with uh, Matt Oliver and uh, oh, uh, Mr. Heil. Uh, I'm trying to think. Not Mr. Heil. He's going to kick me when if he hears me. <laughs> See again, I'm terrible. Uh, Tim Heller. He's married to uh, Heil. I'm sorry, yeah. Tim Heller. Uh, the oral auction again is going to be between 4.30 and 5 o'clock starting up. Then Southern Gypsy is actually playing from 3 to 5 and then after the auction and then Boyfriend's going to play after that. Um, I think I got everything. I think we got seven food trucks like we were talking about earlier mm -hmm. and two. So, I mean, please come up there and enjoy. Uh, it's actually a very cheap event if you don't want to come if you want to come up and just walk around and be nosy You can do that all for free, but hopefully you'll buy some beer at the beer garden or food at the food trucks or spend some money in the auction areas so. Yeah, just buy some Tickets and smack them in every box. <laughs> yep. Yeah, and that's something too again It's kind of weird, you know, we keep talking about different ways of how we can raise more money and they people tell us that we should raise our hand entry or pay for people to do the ride or like the tickets I think you get uh, 30 tickets for $20 or something like that and you put them in the baskets instead of doing the, the right. you know, writing down so it's it actually is kind of an inexpensive thing if you want to come up and not spend much money you can have a lot of fun and oh the bounce house crew and games every game you play is a winner every person's winner no matter what we made sure that if uh, anybody that comes up there, little kids, special needs, anybody, if you're going to play a game, you're going to win something. And they agreed to it. So they're, there's not going to be one of those that you're going to come up and spend 20 bucks and walk away with nothing. Nothing, yeah. yeah. But, yep, yeah, that's our day. So between your guys' and our day, it's going to be one crazy day. It will. <laughs> <laughs> Which is going to be a good thing, though. It's going to yeah, be a great thing a for St. Jenner. Yeah. It is. That's yeah. for sure. So you have downtown and the park. Yep. Are the fairgrounds. fairgrounds. It's, it's just amazing yeah. that a town this small is capable of doing such diverse, interesting, terrific things. It's really great. Yeah. It's good to be part of it, that's for sure. That's good. Okay. So we'll say goodbye to everybody that's listening. Mm -hmm. And thank you guys for coming. Thanks for letting Thank us be here. Thanks Appreciate for having us. Yep. We always <laughs> like people. Oh, we <laughs> wish <laughs> be here. <laughs> we do. Terry, we've been doing this for 12 years, I think, almost now. Well, we started in 11.